Hey everybody, AJ here, and in today's video, we are gonna have a look at Microsoft Journal. If you don't know or you haven't heard of Microsoft Journal before, it is fast becoming one of my favorite apps. In my opinion, it is the most fully fledged version of a physical notebook made digital. Yes, I have heard of OneNote before and OneNote has changed the way I work and it's changed my personal life, but OneNote is such a beast of a program. Microsoft Journal is essentially just that, it is your digital journal, but the tools and the features and the simplicity of this app has made it one of my favorite apps and I've only been using it for a short while. In today's video, I'm gonna take you through some of the tips, the tricks and the features of Microsoft Journal and let me know what you think about it in the comment section down below. Of course, if you guys like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and if you really wanna supercharge how you use your computer, hit that subscribe button as well. And with that being said, let's jump into this. So I've got a little bit of a funky setup here. I've got my Surface Book 3 in front of me. I've got my iPhone recording everything because I want you guys to see my hand, my pen interactions and not just the screen recording. Um, and then I've got my microphone here so you can hear me. What you can see here in front of us is the app. I've just opened it up. On the left hand side here, this is where your, all your journals will store. On the right hand side here, I've signed in with my work account or my demo work account on here. And you can also see it shows me all of my meetings. I think this is really, really awesome because it means that if I'm gonna go into a meeting, I've already signed into the journal app. So if I wanna start taking notes for that meeting, I've already got it here in my journal app. I open it up, I say, hey, it's the Q3 planning. I select on that. It says, where do you wanna put the notes for this, this meeting? I could put it in the tips and tricks with journal or I could create a new journal and call it say customer meetings or Q3 planning or anything like that. I think the integration between journal and Microsoft 365 is really on point because it means that you can share your journal with your work colleagues or your school friends. And of course, everything is gonna store them back up to the cloud. We're gonna launch the tips and tricks with Microsoft journal. It's a real journal that they've preloaded on here. It's quite simple. Here is your, your digital page. Down the bottom here, you have different pen colors and sizes. You have the highlighter, you have pencils, you have the eraser, or if you've got a surface pen, you can use the back as the eraser. You also have the plus button, which right now only has the option to import a PDF document, but I can almost guarantee, just like the whiteboard app, that plus option is gonna get so many more features and functions in the coming months and years. And then of course you have undo and redo. To the right of that, you have all the pages in your journal to help you quickly jump and navigate between the two. But you can also select on the card option and this will actually break it down into different cards if you have different headings and different tags throughout. You can see here there is a little search option. So of course it, it uses Microsoft AI to understand your, your writing. But what I think is really cool is that the little filter here is if we select on that, there's a bunch of little tags that are gonna appear. So you can look at everything that was starred or headings or highlighted so that you can go through and you can actually use not just the name or wording to search, you can actually use different symbols like stars and underlines and highlights, even app mentions. So it just gives you another way to interact with the Microsoft Journal app. Cool, so let's actually start running through the journal here. What I like about it is that it is super, super smooth and it's got a lot of great features built into it. I use this more on my Pro X than I do on my Book 3 here, but basically any Windows 10 device with a pen, you're gonna have a lot of fun using the journal app. The first thing we're gonna learn is how to create different headings, and this is really quite simple. Basically what it says is if you underline anything, it will turn that thing that you've underlined and it'll make it into a heading. Once I underline across that, you see on the right-hand side here, a little A is gonna appear, and that actually says that you've just converted that line that says sample heading, I rubbed out the G, so sorry about that. But you can see here that it is now actually known as a heading and everything under that will be, I guess, the content of that heading. And this is really quite cool because it's gonna help you quickly section off the pages in your, in your journal. If we scroll down, it's got a smart select. So if we tap on the A here, it'll let us grab just that heading. If we tap on it again on the font, it's gonna let us grab even more. And if we tap on it one more time, we've now selected that entire page. And then we can do things like copying, pasting, moving that text around. And of course, you can actually use the navigation tool to look for those headings. So if we go to the navigation tool here, we grab our filters and then we just hit filter by all the, the headings. You see it says we have nine page headings here and it's highlighted them for us. Scrolling down, the option to star your notes is Again, a great, great feature. And you have two options here to really star something. You can draw an asterisk or you can actually draw a star. 
I definitely won't be able to draw a star like this, but I can do a very quick asterisk. And again, what you see on the right hand side here is after it recognizes there's an asterisk, that little star symbol appears, and that means that you've just starred that. So you can easily recall it later because it's a bit of information that is important to you. So when you go back, you filter by your stars, and you can see here, filtering by the star, we have one thing that's starred, it's that note. It's gonna take us straight to it. This is where I talk about utilization with 365, whether it's for work, whether it's for school, whether it's for personal where you're just tagging people, at mentions are everywhere, from Facebook to Instagram, Teams, Outlook. At mentions are a really quick and easy way to get someone's attention to an item. In journal here, if I draw the at mention symbol, and then I start typing someone's name, it will take a few seconds to pull in from the directory again. This is depending on how quick my internet is. And you can see I can now at mention Adele or Alex or Alan. I'm gonna grab uh, Alex here, and you can see I've actually just at mentioned Alex on the page. I'm gonna keep scrolling here, but I think that is really cool already. If you guys like it, let me know in the comment section down below. So selecting things with taps, I showed you this just before, but I'll show you again on here. Basically, if you tap on one thing, it's gonna select that bit of text. If I tap it again, it expands that selection. Tap it again, it expands that selection again. And then you can do things like copy. Copy as text. If you copy it as a text, you can then go and paste it into say like a Word document. I could cut it, I could share it, I could delete it, but it makes it really easy to just tap, tap, tap and select extra bits of that page. Or you could use the circle to select things. So there's no lasso tool like there is on the whiteboard or in, um, in OneNote, but if I just draw around this with a pen, I can quickly circle it to select it. I think that's really quick and easy for all the devices that actually don't have a physical button and it's a two-step process of selecting the lasso, circling, and then deselecting the lasso and selecting a different color. Here, it's simply just grabbing the pen, circling around it, and you select that bit of text. And now we can tap, tap, tap to expand that selection. So it's really easy, really intuitive, and it's just a great way of interacting with this content. Of course, because this is a digital notebook, we can zoom in and zoom out. So super simple. If you're wondering about you know, whether you can zoom in, you definitely can. What I've just zoomed in on is the easeability of scratching or rubbing things out. Again, if you have a surface pen, I use the back of the pen as my eraser, but if you don't, you just draw a quick scribble and it's gonna erase it for you. If I didn't wanna do that, use the undo button. Here it is, undo again, gets rid of my scribble. Scrolling through and you can see how smooth it is as it scrolls. On a physical piece of paper, if you're writing something out and you're like, oh, I'm stuck, my page is, you know, it's only this big, but I've got a bit more I wanna, wanna add. Then you've got to draw a line, you're gonna say go to the next page, whatever it may be, or you just don't write it in. Because this is digital, you can really enhance the way you work here. And all you gotta do is tap somewhere, and you can see here, you've got the options to add a space or to tear the page. I'm actually just gonna add a space and everything under this space now is gonna be pushed down. So really easy. Down here, I'm actually gonna tap and I'm actually gonna tear that page. And that means that everything on that page is actually now under that tear has moved to a second page. Really easy, really simple, really freaking cool. So here's a list for you guys to do, subscribe, and of course, don't forget to comment. You can see on the left-hand side here, as I was writing and putting those lines in, this little symbol appeared, letting me know that, hey, there's a list there. Really, again, easy, simple, super effective. I know I'm gonna be using that, and I already have been using it quite a bit, because I just see it as being such a really effective tool. And because it's digital, you can tag people, you can at mention them, you can copy that text and paste it in somewhere else. Just so many different ways of working with um, with these lists here. So let's actually open up a meeting here called Q3 Planning. We're not gonna drop it into tips and tricks. Let's actually create a brand new journal. It's already pulled the name of that meeting and just brought it straight across. Here you can do some cool things like add different colors to it, different, different icons, and then we're just gonna go done. You see, it's gonna open you up in a new page. On the right hand side here, it's gonna give you all the meeting details. So this is a Teams meeting and we could join it straight from journal. If I hit that join option, it's gonna launch into Microsoft Teams and it's gonna show me the people here that are in that meeting. So again, integration with Microsoft Teams, just phenomenal. On the top corner here, you can see it's actually got the name of that meeting. It's also got the date, so it's indexed for you. Again, really simple integration with Microsoft 365, make this a really powerful tool. So let's go ahead and actually use 
some of this, right? So I've just quickly mocked up a few things on this page here, and this is my Q3 planning for the YouTube channel. So what are the goals for Q3 with this YouTube channel? Well, I wanna hit a thousand subscribers, get over 10,000 watch hours and 100,000 views, just so you can see something on the page here. But what we're gonna look at now is actually interacting with the content. So at the top here, as you can see, we've got the title of the meeting. In the right-hand side though, there is a little ellipses, and this gives you different options. So of course, there's the option to copy the page, copy a link to the page, or if you wanted to, you could copy that page as a text. And it says down the bottom here, they've copied that as a text to your clipboard. So if I went ahead and I want to open, say Microsoft Word, for example, I could right click in Microsoft Word and then I could go paste. I just wanna drop the caveat though, is that the page is more brainstorming, it won't translate 100%. But you can see here, it actually grab like, subscribe and comment, the words that I'd written out in that list. They're perfectly there. I've got 100 watch hours, goals, 100,000 views. Pretty accurate in the fact that I've, if you look at the page here, I didn't really write things out very clearly. They were sort of disjointed. But here's that OCR, that character recognition, where we copied something from that page here, dropped it into Microsoft Word or pasted it into an email, wherever it may be. Really easy to hit your ellipses here, copy that as plain text and then paste it somewhere else. You could of course grab a screenshot of the page and then share that with people, or you could go into the options here. You could send the page via email, which would actually grab a beautiful screenshot for you and send it straight into Outlook for you to uh, send off to somebody else. You could of course remove the page header. So you're gonna hide that page header from here, just so the page looks a bit neater. If we look at that ellipses one more time, what other options do we have? We can of course add a page above. So say we're working on something and we're like, oh wait, we need something more in front of it. You can just go with the ellipses and you can insert that page above it. And now this page that was page number one is now page number two. And we have a brand new page in front of us. If we hit the ellipses one more time, what other options do we have? We could either clear that page or delete it. So clearing the page would remove everything off it. So here I've got a page with a bit more info. We go option, we're gonna clear that page, everything's gone. If that was a mistake, just press the back button, brings it all back for you. Or if you've got a page here and you don't actually need it, you go options, delete page, it's gonna remove it for you. And here we have again, page one of one. One thing that I did wanna show you that really isn't in any of the tips and tricks here is how to insert an image into your journal. If you press on the plus button, you can only import a PDF document, but if we grab a new page, so ellipses, we're gonna insert a page above. So on the desktop here, I have a page with a whole bunch of photos. This could be a screenshot, it could be an image. On the right-hand side, I have my journal. If I just grab an image and I drag and drop it from here, I can actually drop it straight onto the journal and boom, we've just drag and drop something from, from the desktop or from our files, drag and drop it, and then you can bring that image or PDF or document, whatever it may be, into the Microsoft Journal app. All right, so that is an introduction to Microsoft Journal. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Of course, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you really want to supercharge how you use your computer, hit that subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching. Happy journaling. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.